Hello and welcome back to tutorial 150 and in this tutorial what we've done is created two programs a sending program and a receiving program and the sending program creates various levels on a chart and then allows you or allows the user to move those levels by dragging them around the chart and then a few seconds later the lines are moved on the receiving chart and in fact this is the uh, second video and we're going to be des describing the receiving program we have a first video and uh, you can view that by going to markplex free tutorials Let's click on free tutorials and then if you uh, scroll down to the bottom you'll find 150 just click on that and you'll see both videos there. Uh, also, uh, if you're not part of the email list, then this would be a good time to subscribe. And you can do that by uh, going to Markplex again and then clicking on this item here, subscribe and uh, just your name and your email address. And then I can let you know when I create new programs and tutorials. So I, I showed you the, uh, the movement of the lines. The information for those lines is shared using the Excel class and what I'm going to do I'll just open up Excel so you can see the format that the information is stored by the sending program and then received by uh, or rather read by the receiving programs so you can see here that the information is stored in rows and uh, one of the inputs for both programs is a unique name and uh, the current unique name this is just a name that the user gives to identify the set of data is list four and that is the same unique name for both the sending and the receiving program and then we can see the values of the levels there and if we were to change them then those values would be updated okay so let's now look at the program okay so you'll see that we uh, load the namespaces first and then we go to our inputs which are very similar to the sending program we have the colors of the 10 lines we have the unique name in the example I just showed you with Excel that was list four. we have the file name and again we need to make sure that we do have a file named this in this location otherwise there will be an error and then there's a, a new uh, input here in the receiving program line move int and this is because Excel does not have an update event that is available to us so what we'd have to do is use the timer uh, to trigger every so many seconds a reread of the excel spreadsheet and then to see if any of the uh, the values of the lines are different from the lines that have been drawn in the receiving program and if they are then to move those lines to the new levels indicated by the excel spreadsheet so let's continue going down the uh, variables are similar to the sending program apart from now we have a timer variable and then let's just go to the one statement and we can look at the methods after that so we're creating new vectors and we use uh, a few vectors one line refs this is going to be where we're going to be storing the horizontal lines themselves line colors that's where we're going to be storing the uh, the colors of the lines line vowels this is where we're storing the values of the lines and then we're creating a new workbook we're putting the colors into the line colors vector and the reason we do this is then we can access those colors in a loop rather than having to do them individually now you'll see we have here a setup timer now if you're not familiar with this syntax or you've not used it before and you can't copy it in from one of your other programs one of the ways you can access the code is if you go to the toolbox and um, scroll down until you find the timer double click on that call it whatever you want to call it but then make sure it's selected and go to properties and you'll see here various options we're gonna uh, we would have enabled to be true in this case you could set a default interval or you could make that an input we go to the update event we would we are using an elapsed update so you go there and double click and then what you'll find is that code has been added to the program ready for use now the only additional thing that you'd need to, to do if you wanted the code in your program as opposed to in uh, designer generated code is you could go to the designer generated code 
find the uh, the code that's been generated, copy that code. Uh, in other words, timer, new timer name, and the event into the one statement. And then having done that, you can go back to the program and delete this item from the tray. And also, since we've already included this code, elsewhere in the program, we can delete that. So we're defining the spreadsheet very much as we did or identically as we did in the sending program. And then the first thing we need to do, and we are assuming that there is a row of data with the unique name available in the spreadsheet. And so we need to find out which row is our unique name on. And if you recall, in the example I gave, I created a line called list four. So we would then go through the spreadsheet using a while loop and we would see when the item, when the string in, in column one indicated here is equal to the unique name. And we do that by saying, is it not equal? Okay, continue the loop. Is it not equal? Continue. And then when it is um, equal, then we have the row counter. And what I've done is limited this to be under 101. So we're starting at one. That means we're just going to go through a hundred rows. This is part of the timer. Load Excel is referring to a method, which we will look at in a moment. And what that method does is it for the particular row, it will load the information for the unique name into a vector. And that's the line vowels vector. And then having got the, the levels where we need the lines, we can draw them for the first time. And we do that in a loop. We create the line, which we store in a variable or rather an object H line. Then we add that to the chart and then we add that line into the lines, line refs vector. And then we color it using the syntax color dot from name. And then, as I mentioned, the colors are now in a vector, the line colors vector, and we can access that using this loop. Okay, so that is the one statement. The next thing that I wanna do is go through the methods. So let's scroll to top of the program. And the first method is load Excel. And what this does, it clears the line vowels vector using line vowels dot clear. And then the, uh, the brackets or the, the um, parentheses. Then we go through the number of lines and we've set this as a constant num number SR, the, uh, the number of horizontal lines. For each case, we store the value that we find in that cell in the spreadsheet. And remember, we already know row counter. We know the row that this is on. So we're just going through the counters for the columns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We we put that into the line vowels vector using pushback. So essentially all this does is take the data from the Excel and put puts it in a vector. And the reason I did this is I uh, believe that it would be a more efficient way of accessing that information. The next method is move line. And on the last bar of the chart, what that does is it loads Excel. It makes sure we've got a fresh copy of the data in Excel, bearing in mind that that could have changed at any time. We get the line val from the, uh, this um, variable line val is taken from the line vals. So this is where the values have been stored in the, uh, the vector line vowels and then we go through and we're doing this for each line the actual horizontal line we get the horizontal line from the line refs vector as type horizontal line and then we simply compare the value of the line val in other words the uh, the price of the line val that is currently effectively stored in the excel and compare that with the equivalent line that's plotted on the chart and if they're different what we do is simply move the, the horizontal line that's changed using this syntax here. That is the move line. And that is called by the timer. And you can see here, this is the, uh, the code that we were looking at a few seconds ago. And what we do is in that uh, timer, in other words, every time the timer elapses, uh, we call move line. And that'll make sure that uh, we keep the lines moved in sync with the Excel. And you'll notice when we were looking at the chart that uh, that seemed to take a few seconds. And the reason for that is that if, uh, if this does have a disadvantage as an approach, it is that 
we have to use the timer and as you can imagine if we had several charts this might create uh, an overhead for the program and in this case I've set that at 5000 which is five seconds. Okay well I hope this has been useful. Uh, please feel free to email me questions and uh, please subscribe to our email list and also if you're watching this on YouTube subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.